Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And once again, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Remember, we are celebrating Christmas because it is the 12 days of Christmas that started on Christmas Day, December 25th, and the 12 days take us through January 5th. So today is the third day of Christmas, uh, and it also is the 27th of December, which means we are celebrating the Feast of St. John the Evangelist. Now, this is a particularly special day for us here at St. John's Church because this is our name day. And in fact, we are called St. John's Church because we were incorporated on the Feast of St. John the Evangelist. Just to take you back a little bit, back on December 6th, uh, in 1858, Henry Porter Baldwin, a prosperous merchant here in the city of Detroit, um, who had built himself a country estate. He had a house down in the city where the Penobscot building is located now, uh, but he had a country house as well. And the country house was way out in the country. It was located here on Woodward Avenue across the street from where St. John's is now. As a matter of fact, his house was, is now the freeway. But he decided that he thought the city of Detroit would probably move uh, and build, grow up to the north, up Woodward Avenue. And so even though this was considered out of town, where, where we're located now, uh, he bought the apple orchard that was across the street that when it became available for sale and had designed a chapel and a church. And he called together a meeting of his neighbors who were living way out in the country and said, let's start a new church. I will donate the land. I'll donate the blueprints. I'll donate the first thousand dollars if we can raise the other six thousand dollars to build a chapel. Uh, and so it is that uh, they met again on the 13th and had all the money pledged. Uh, and on December 27th, they had all the money on deposit in the bank uh, for, the, uh, for the building of our chapel. Uh, and so they signed their letters of incorporation. And we became a church on the Feast of St. John the Evangelist. Uh, and so St. John's Day is certainly one that is very special and near dear to our heart as we now celebrate 162 years of ministry on this corner of Woodward and High Street. Now you think, wait a second, High Street? What? That, that's what the street used to be called next to the church. Uh, and it went from highway, from being High Street to being Verner uh, to now being the Fisher Freeway service drive. So, so we're glad that, to, that the parish is, 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 has, is here. We're glad that Henry Porter Baldwin and the early neighbors out here in the country had the foresight to not only build a church, but to build it in such a way that they knew that eventually they'd have to build a bigger church, bigger than the chapel. What they didn't realize was that they would immediately start construction on it as the week after the chapel opened, it was already too small. And so they began plans to build the church. And the big church was actually built ready for this, the big church was built in 20 months time, right? It took longer for us to do the renovation of the office building a couple of years ago than it did for them to build the big church. Um, but I thought what I would do uh, in honor of St. John's Day uh, and in thanksgiving for the founding of our parish is I would read what was, what was placed in the cornerstone of St. John's Church. And we know this not only from the history records of the time, but remember the church was moved in 1937. They picked it up and they moved it back 60 feet to widen the street in front of us. And they reopened the cornerstone uh, and, and examined the contents and put new things in and put a new, a new uh, items in and relayed the cornerstone when they rebuilt the bell tower after the move. Uh, but this is what was written by uh, Father uh, William Armitage, our first rector. We are conscious and confident that we are building that which will outlast ourselves. And we rejoice in the hope that within the walls we are permitted to raise thousands in successive generations will worship God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and confess our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the sacraments and ordinances of his gospel, and partake of all the blessings of membership in his church, which are precious to our souls today. As Christians and as churchmen, we thank God for our strong assurance and conviction drawn on past history that the Protestant Episcopal Church for whose communion this building will be reared is so grounded on the one foundation, Jesus Christ, so true to him in the ministry, the doctrine, the liturgy, the sacred year, the entire system which he has inherited, so careful of his complete gospel, holding each and every part thereof in its own due proportion and harmony, that however we and those who shall follow us may prove unworthy of her and of her Lord, among the changes and chances of this world, 
she will remain in all essential things unchanged. We thank God that we shall be permitted to leave to our successors not only this building wherein the truth of God may be proclaimed, but the stronger and more enduring building of the church, made at the first the pillar and ground of the truth, and now its best preservation and defense. And although we are not worthy to offer unto him anything of ours, we humbly pray him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to accept this building for his own from this day forth, to preserve it and to be the home of many souls of his servants while here in the body through generations to come. And we pray him of his infinite mercy to guide and govern his ministers and his people who shall serve him in this house from year to year and by his indwelling presence and spirit to keep them ever firm, steadfast and true in heart and life to the everlasting gospel, to the confession of one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. May it continue to be true today, tomorrow, and forever. I hope to see you in church today. Uh, we do have uh, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock, 11.30, and 12.30. So we have five services this morning. Uh, if you haven't signed up, uh, go to stjohnsdetroit.org, click on the link, and sign up, and please come and join us for worship on this third day of Christmas. May God bless you.